Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is day 28 of the August Legal Daily Challenge. Yay! End of four weeks, right? Because that's how math works. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm. Uh, and yeah, I usually stop these live, so feel free to watch it on a faster speed. Okay, so today's farm is maximum profit in job scheduling. Okay. You have end jobs, where every job schedule to be done by. Okay. Profit over there. We turn the maximum profit so that there's no overlaps. Okay. This seems straightforward depending on what constraints are. So the start time, end time is 10 to the 9th, and profit is. Okay. I, th this part I, I thought I. Um, yeah, this part I, I thought that I could do that just dynamic programming. Uh, I mean, it still might be that uh, it probably is still dynamic programming in some way, but I thought that I could do the time as a one of the states, but but that being ten to nine means that that's not the case. I think this one is just um, try to figure out um, how to figure out how to to do uh, um. Kind of dynamic programming, but one one thing that people miss about dynamic programming uh, is that dynamic programming uh, is a core part of it is greedy and and what I so yeah so that's so the the greedy part of the dynamic programming and these optimization problems that that's the way that I'm thinking about it right now and figuring about how to solve it. Um, let me, let me pull up. Uh, a visualization tool real quick because I think this one is a little bit um, I mean I, I might I, I I don't know off my head enough to be like this is how I would do it um, but I have some idea so let's let's explore it together right so basically you have a, a number line going from left to right and then you have these boxes that's basically what um, you know the visualizations are, um, and basically the idea is that obviously, or at least one idea, one of the more obvious ideas is that you know we're gonna scan from left to right, so we sort the the um, the beginning points and then the end points and so forth, right? Um, so we have to so we parse these events from left to right. Um, so this is going this is sweep line. Uh, or line sweep algorithm. Um, I'll type it on the screen in a second. I guess I'll just type it here in case, because I think I get asked what I say a lot for some reason for line sweep, because I think it's just like a weird thing to say if you don't have any context. Uh, but yeah, uh, so you have this line sweep algorithm, right? So basically, the two type of events, and then maybe I should have done it in two different colors. <laughs> hmm. How did I change colors here? I think I closed the wrong window by accident. Let's see. Let's see our toolbox. Okay, so basically you have the beginning event, which is let's just say is green, and then you have um, you have an end end event. So let's just say this one, right? Because that's the end of the boxes. Um, okay. So the way that I think about it, and I'm thinking about it right now anyway, is that given this. They're, they're just these two events, right? The green and the red, or the start and the beginning to pause as a event. And in that case, what, what happens, right? So, so in a green event, and let's, let's actually take one in the middle because the ones in the beginning are trivial. So let's just say we go here, right? Uh, let, let's say we're processing this box. What does that mean for us? That means that here, we go, okay, what is the most profit that we can take at this point? And the most profit we can take at this point is, is, um, it, it, it is basically the maximum of everything that, that is before this. I'm trying to draw like, basically everything that's before this arrow, we, we take the maximum of everything to the left that is done. Basically, and what, what what does that mean? That means that we take the maximum sum of all the red red points, right? Oops. I mean, that wasn't a whoops, but maybe I should change the color a little bit. Uh, so basically, all the red points, 
we basically take the max profit of all the red points and then add it to the is current green point and then we we add an event say that that allow us to go okay well this red point then as soon as we process it then we put it in a thing to allow us to get the max so that's basically the idea um i hope this visualization is good enough for us to kind of get started um yeah so that's basically the idea so in that case uh let, let's say i have events um you can probably if you're really uh really fancy of the implementation you could probably sort these together but i i don't know events is equal to this so yeah so what do we do All right for start and p for profit i don't know money <laughs> in sip of start time and time profit um okay so i just like putting them together i don't even know if i need to use all three per se but part of that is exploration so we we set up the start events as we talked about um, do i need more no i mean i guess we just, they just put everything in here um as defense i think the only thing you need to care about sorting is to start anyway so yeah so we then now we sort and then now we we do again for start and money oops all right uh oops in events what happens okay well as we said when we see what happens when we see a start when we see a start we want to mm. this is still right but i think what i want is a uh... there are actually a couple of ways to implement this uh in that you can actually you know set up the event such that the start and an end and then we index them in a good way or something but the way that i'm going to do this is a little bit different today so actually what i want is that instead of sorting we want to heapify it say i think that's the syntax hmm. let me double check basically what we want to do is now we have a heap so that when we process the start uh we can put in the end event as well um so now it's a little bit awkward so hmm, maybe that's not a great idea let me think about implementation real quick because basically you can either put all the start events and the end event at the same time or or you can put in the end events live i don't know okay fine let's do it the other way um so let's do events uh sorry do, 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 do. let's add an enumerate so we can add an index to this um and then now we append the start index i guess doesn't here and then if oh and this is i put in a flag one uh, let's just say start is equal to one and is equal to two doesn't something like that so start we do start defense start append n and index um okay so we actually didn't need money per se, but that's because we index is kind of money and that we, we, um, hmm, do I, you need index then? Sorry, today I'm very indecisive. I just woke up, so a little bit sluggish. Okay, fine. Let, let's take the money part here instead. So then we, now we don't need index again. So now we, yeah, I like to keep it clean. So I'm going to remove it back. Okay, fine. No, this doesn't make sense. That's why. Okay. So I'm thinking for it a second. Um, okay. Fine. Let's let's have index. Yeah. So I'm very indecisive right now because the the reason you'll see in a second, but but I'm thinking a little bit too too not ahead of time. Uh, okay. So now I'm just looking for right now to see on the border how it represents. So here. The end times is three, and then the beginning is three, and they are good. So you can use both. Okay, 
So I just want to make sure that it's not like if I, if I have any off by one. Um, because of this, we actually uh, process the start time before the end time. So actually, let's let's change the order of this. So um, so we want to process all the ends before the start. If the if the x's are the same, what what do we do? That's what I want to think about. Uh, and we actually want to process the ends before the start. So let's actually make this one. Okay, let's just make this zero. Um, okay, and then now we sort them, and then now it's start, uh, or this is x, if, uh, this is the event type, and then the index, and events, okay. Um, okay, so now uh, we, saw, we sorted with these events, where right? now we, we can see if e is equal to start what happens well then we take as we saw from the diagram we want to take the max of everything we've already seen and and yeah mm. the way i'm thinking about this is a little bit awkward okay so so we want to uh, do something like um max profit say so max is equal to um and we have to set this up obviously um max profit processing the beginning of this thing right um what does that mean that means that the max profit is is the the current the previous max profit that we've seen of all the events so far um let's just say best Plus, uh, okay, let's just say the previous best, plus uh, the profit of index, right? Because that's just, this is what we have from previous, this is the profit of, uh, well, this is just the input of this current index. Um, yeah. And then else, uh, it, on an end event, what happens? Well, we update previous best because now we we are fin able to update previous best. So previous best is equal to max of previous best, max profit of index. I think that's okay. And max profit is, oh sorry, uh, well both. Max profit is equal to say zero times n, where n is the number of start time say. So that's the ma max profit. And then previous best is just zero, and then at the very end we can just return max of max profit, which I think is the last element maybe, but but well, maybe not, because hmm. I, I guess it's not sorted. But but yeah, I think this should be on the right track mostly. Uh, let's see if this is right. So the key thing here, it, um, and an implementation that I, I was doing, is to separate out the left side and the right side, right? Because now, um, and this is what, if if you see other people or uh, just like doing CS problems in general, people talk about invariants, right? And that's basically uh, the the kind of the pain point that you saw me having is uh, uh, figuring about that invariant is such that when we reach an event we want things to be true right um we want well let, let me submit first <laughs> just in case it was wrong and then i'll be like whoops now nah, you know nothing okay cool um but the idea so the thing about where invariant is that here for every loop of this and this is where I, I was struggling between how to implement this here but because of this loop invariant of okay for every iteration, the previous best is, let me bring back the diagram for a second. The previous best is basically this thing, right? Uh, let me change the colors to purple-ish. It's this thing, right? This is the previous best. This represents the, the best of all the previous endpoints uh, up to the point that you're measuring. So that's basically the idea. Um, and me, me trying to implement that invariant of, okay, 
how do I keep previous best being the best of everything, right? Because then now we have to take the, but it is just what we said at the beginning. We um at the beginning of a a, a segment or a box or whatever, we want to update it so that we know the profit for at the end of this box. So we update the the red segment, if you will, of a box. And then here we at the end of the box. And then at the end of the box, we know that we already processed everything to the left of the timeline or number line or whatever. So then now we can up update this. Um, you can actually do this in a number of different ways, but you have to keep track of more states and stuff like that. Uh, and state meaning like just, uh, you have to keep track of more things than if statement. So the way that I was thinking about it was just trying to keep this as simple as possible for events and have, having that this visualization of just going from left to right allow us to allow us to do do this right um and maybe i could have thought about it a little bit ahead of time but that's why i spend a lot of time here setting it up such that i can write this in like four lines right so that's basically the idea um yeah what is the complexity well this just goes through the linear the the input in a linear way um but it's going to be dominated by this thing which is n log n uh no, the sorting is n log n, so everything is going to be n log n, but everything else is linear otherwise. Um, in terms of space, you know, defense is going to be linear, max profit is going to be linear, so this is just linear space. Uh, this, yeah, I think this that's pretty much it. Um, hmm. Am I okay? I think I'm okay. Let me know what you think. This is one of those tricky problems that I think the first time I've done it, uh, like this or similar problems, it was very tricky took me forever because I, I, I only know the DP solution um, at the time, but I think, um, and, and you kind of see me do this programming live, right? Um, I think that's the lesson here is that, you know, even though I have an idea about this, um, the thing about what I remember or what I kind of learned from these problems is the principle that allowed me to reconstruct everything, right? And kind of the visualization that you see allow me to kind of write, because the code here, like I don't remember these templates or whatever some people might do. I just remember the logic that gets me there. So yeah, uh, so definitely try to learn it. If you really learn it in a in a way such that, you know, you're able to approach it um, consistently. The programming isn't, you know, like the, the, the code will write itself. Um, so yeah, I mean, of course, you need to practice uh, the programming component as well, but um, but I usually focus on the algo part because, you know, it is whatever. Anyway, uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, happy weekend. Yay. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.